Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I am Mike, and this is a review of Dark Harvest. No, that is not a film about what happens in the toilet after consuming Taco Bell. It is a $5.99 VOD movie right now that you can watch. That's a Halloween movie. We're a couple weeks late on it. There's a lot going on in October, and also late on my taxes, my period. You're going to be a dad soon. Congratulations. We're going to have a butt baby. And by the way, before we get started, check out these new WAMP shirts that we've got. They are 35% off, extra off, in the store right now. I'll put a pinned comment in the comments below if you guys want to check those out. This movie is directed by David Slade, and he directed 30 Days of Night, which most of us know, the Josh Hartnett vampire flick. He directed Hard Candy. He directed multiple episodes of Black Mirror. So that, plus the fact that this script has been around for, it seems like, ages at this point, and this movie's been in production for what it feels like ages. I remember doing our horror movies coming in, like, 2022 or 21 video, and this movie was on that list, because, like, that movie sounds like Halloween. The plot's about this 1960s t small town that's surrounded by corn and every year on halloween night this scarecrow with this pumpkin head comes to life and tries to make its way to the church before midnight killing whoever gets in its way on its way there and if it does get to that church at midnight then the whole town is in peril and everyone's going to have bad luck and everything's going to be very very bad for everyone like you're sitting in a karaoke bar in hawaii and ezra miller walks in the front door everyone's fucked but the kicker is, it has to be a teenager from the town that kills it, that stops it. A teenager from the town has to murder it, and then all the teenagers have to rip its body open and eat the candy that's been stuffed inside of it. And then everyone's safe again for another year. Then they take the kid that won it, they give him a Corvette, they give him a check for like 25 or 15 grand or whatever it is, and they send him on their way, and they can go live their life somewhere else and just have a joyous experience while they leave everybody in town back at the fuckaroo fest. And the whole community prepares this all year long to keep themselves safe. They take the kids, the teenagers in the town, three days before the event and they lock them in their rooms with no food or anything so that by the time the day comes, they are ready to eat some of old Sawtooth Jack's chest candy. First off, the idea for this is really cool and it comes sort of from a novel written by Norman Partridge, who also wrote, and he'd probably like me to leave this off, the Crow Wicked Prayer novel that that Edward Furlong Crow movie was based on. Not his fault, it was just the novel. He didn't make the movie. But it's a really fun idea, and it reminds me of Jeepers Creepers mixed with like Halloween. It's got all that stuff in there. But to be fair, it's not exactly that original of an idea. There's an episode of Erie, Indiana that came back way back when, and it was called Mr. Cheney. And in this episode, Marshall, the main guy in Erie, Indiana, which fucking rips, by the way, if you haven't seen that show, you got to check it out. But in that show, every 13 years, there's a lottery in this small town, and they pick a teenager to become the Harvest King, and they get a cow for some weird reason, and all the cheerleaders come over their house and, and congratulate them, not in a sexual way, at least not that they show, and they just, they're just the shit in town. They become the most popular person, the parents are beloved, everything's wonderful for this kid who gets randomly selected as Harvest King. The only thing is, is that he then has to go into the woods and sit until he spots a werewolf. Marshall starts to realize that, hey, these kids never come back. And they always say like they went to Paris or some stuff like that. And it's one of the best episodes of Erie, Indiana, but this is very, very close to that storyline. It's an all time great show. You gotta watch it. Dark Harvest. Ah, we're gonna start with the good stuff. First off, holy shit, this is the creature of the year. Old Sawtooth Jack, which is the fucking greatest name ever. I'm not sure it could be the greatest, it could be the worst, but I love it either way. Just like I call Jason from Friday the 13th Part 2, old baghead Jason. This is old Sawtooth Jack. And it's got a cool name and an even cool creature design. It's my favorite creature of the entire year. That thing is fucking cool, man. The way it moves, it has almost this, it's, it's got a pumpkin head-esque vibe to it, obviously, because there's a literal goddamn pumpkin on its fucking head. The way it moves is just so cool, and the way it's shot is so badass. There's this one shot where, like, the walls are on fire, and it's, like, twisting its head. This thing is fucking sick, man. You're gonna love that. That is absolutely a 10 out of 10. The creature design is a 10 out of 10. I love the lore behind it. I love the all of that shit. So cool absolutely well done and the the rest of the movie around it kind of fails it and the halloween atmosphere is off the charts in this they use like 5674 and a half pumpkins in this movie pumpkins everywhere david s 
fucking pumpkins. Any questions all over the screen, all over your mom. Everywhere there are pumpkins. So I love the Halloween atmosphere. I love the creature. The overall look and feel and of the film, though, is... It's a goddamn jitterbug. I mean, it's so focused on these quick edits and these jarring moves of the camera and moving close to everybody's face and, and just how, how the camera moves them all. I get that they're trying to show the pandemonium of all the stuff that's happening in this town, but for a movie whose best attribute is its fall elements and its Halloween atmosphere, that's not at all what you want. It never gives you the chance to settle in and kind of be in the movie. It's just kind of like, look at this shit. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. And it's it's sort of annoying, to be honest with you. And the characters aren't great either. Like I said, the story and the idea is there, but everything takes place in the 60s. And I get that we've got, you know, like our, our punk, like rebel greasers, and, they, and they're fighting with the... The, the preppy kids and there's all this kind of corny dialogue from these like 50s kids and I get that it's that's that's the time of it but it really just honestly like a lot of the dialogue felt pretty cringe in this and, and it was really over melodramatic for a lot of it and honestly when it comes to the story they do such a great job with this lore and this creature that you really want to focus on it. And instead, they just grab you and keep dragging you back to all these other plot threads, like this kid and this girl that he's trying to date and this bully and all this stuff. And these it turns into a Lord of the Flies situation with these kids a couple times. And they're just... They're taking you away from what you're really focused on. I, I found myself digging through candy and like, you know, dicking around waiting for old Sawtooth Jack to come on the screen because there's just way too much going on for what could be such a simple, pure Halloween movie. There's this over the top cop who's always just screaming and just chewing all the scenery he can and just going way too hard. And it's actually this guy from Halloween Resurrection, by the way. And again, not his fault that he's doing what he's directed to do, but it is way too much. I did love seeing the kids, the main kids' parents being Jeremy Davies and Elizabeth Reeser. They were awesome. They were probably the best actors in the movie. In the end, Dark Harvest is a cool idea, even if it's not quite as original as it may lead you to believe it is. It's got maybe the best creature the entire year and old salt tooth jack but but i kind of just wish that he was in a different movie one that didn't feel like it was stuffed in a tire and lit on fire and rolled down a hill that's just kind of what this movie felt like to me so i will give the movie a 5.5 out of 10 but halloween atmosphere aficionados find it a must watch to at least check out how cool this thing looks and just catch the vibe from the entire thing it's just it's worth it for that alone I, I just maybe maybe this is one of those movies that gets a, a, a remake or, or a sequel that that more focuses on the cool shit. But anyway, I love your all's fucking faces. So much more to come. More movies. We're going we're gonna to do When Evil Lurks and we're going to catch up on some horror movies. This is going to be a fun time in the pantaloons. Don't forget to check out these shirts. 35% off right now only in the link down below. I love your all's fucking faces. Have a great day. Here comes that white faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sister's tits, cause he's a white faced fucker. Loomis can't recover. Dr. Challenge drunk again, sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you want to know about the darkness? I said, God damn. God damn, you fucker. Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS.